And we're back on Bewilder Live from Los Angeles. We're talking with um, uh, Dan Gaynor from the uh, Media Research um, Institute. And I'm still, I'm still livid about that Charlie Hebdo um, cover. So just one more time since I got to get this out of my system. Nobody in France has any right, no moral ground whatsoever to ever talk about Americans being Nazis. If you want to talk about Nazis and you want to talk about Americans and they deserve to die and they deserve to drown and all the rest, take a walk on those beaches in Normandy and you take a look at those graveyards there and those are American people, many of them from the South in Texas, who came to save your country when you couldn't do it for yourself, okay? Fighting the Nazis does not mean overcharging them by a few francs in a cafe, you know, and thinking you're part of the big resistance. Stop it. We've had enough of it. Stop. We have had enough of this. Now, back to you, Dan. Um, do you think that these attitudes towards Americans are, in terms of their, um, their resentment and rage towards these celebrities, is growing? Um, Meryl Streep said during the Golden Globes that she was in a room with the most despised people in America, celebrities, um, Hollywood, and, and foreign journalists, I guess, foreigners. They're not used to being criticized like this, but it seems to me that everything that they're doing is counterproductive. Is there any evidence of that? Well, I'll give you a great example. It wasn't exactly Hollywood celebrities. It was CNN. Uh, one of the CNN reporters was interviewing one of the flood victims yesterday. And, and I think people view media as media. I think they view Hollywood and news the same. And when the reporter, you know, here's this, here's this woman with her, with her child, and they just got out of the floodwaters and they're shivering. And, and this reporter shows a camera and, and a microphone in her face. And the woman told her off, and, you know, blank you, and we won't use that word. But, you know, she said, this is wrong with media. You're, like, you're taking people at their most vulnerable point and then expecting, you know, you're just, they're leeches. I, you know, that it's a hard spot to be in it as a journalist, but the sensitive thing is to talk to the people ahead of time and say, I know you're having a hard time. Is there anything you want to say? And if they don't want to talk, you don't shove a microphone in their face. So I think people, and we saw uh, one of the CNN reporters was complaining because he went somewhere uh, where the crowd, even in Texas, was saying nasty things about them. The American public are fed up with the elite, the elite of New York, the elite of Washington, the elite of L.A., who think they live better lives, they know better, whether it's they know, oh, we should all change how we live because of climate change. And then they have three houses and fly all over the world like Al Gore. They think yeah. they, they know yeah. how we should live. And we're sick of it. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. And by the way, when we say that they're the elite, that doesn't mean that they are actually elite. They consider themselves the elite. I've met these people. These are 60 watt temperature, you know, these are 60 watt intellects that we're talking about, especially the actors who are appearing in these PSAs. So Dan, if you looked at one of the, the one we did, uh, the Save the Day video at the beginning of the show, it looks pretty much like the entire cast of the Avengers was in there. Robert Downey Jr. was there and Scarlett Johansson and Mark Ruffalo and all the rest. Hollywood has had a, just an absolutely catastrophic summer. The, the, the box office revenues this year have been disastrous. Flop after flop after flop after flop after flop. Do you think that's a, a, a signal to Hollywood that the American people are being tired? They're just sick of being told how to vote? Won't you people just shut up and dance? Well, I, I think people want to see what they've always want to see. They don't want to, they're tired of anti-heroes. They want to see real heroes. When American Sniper came out, Hollywood was stunned how well it did. It's like, well, it's not doing well in the, in the, you know, the major cities, but it did well in the heartland. It really wrecked, you know, rocked up the box office. But instead, we get movies that make fun of America. There's a new movie out. I can't, I've been struggling trying to remember the name, but it just came out today. And it's, of course, uh, you know, about, uh, the South seceding and invading the, the North. And it's just a B movie. And ordinarily you and I wouldn't even notice it, except of course the, you know, the important reviewers and such, oh, they love it. It's a movie that came out at the right time. And it shows how evil the South can be and these glorious New Yorkers taking it to the man. And look, I, I'm, sick of, I'm sick of this. I think most of us, we. There, there was a cartoon I saw somebody post today, and it showed 
this is what's really going on. It showed a, a mixed group of people in a lifeboat with an American flag helping people in Texas, but you're know, rescuing them and it had, you know, this is, it's a unity. That's what's really going on. And that is, no matter how much Hollywood tries to tear us apart and say we're all haters by promoting the, the hate group, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Dan Gaynor from the Media Research Center. He's, uh, his job is to keep track of all of these outrages and abuses. I don't know how you do it, Dan, frankly. Just one of those magazine covers enough to make me sick for the rest of the day. Thanks very much for joining us, and, and I'm sure we'll see you again real soon. Thanks, Bill. Take care. There is that movie coming out, by the way. And in the movie, people from the South basically, as he said, try to take over the government and, uh, and basically try to take over New York City. And here's the funny thing about that movie is that they could do it too. Wouldn't take but 15 Texans to take over California and probably fewer than that to basically take over New York City. They project all of their moral failures onto a third party and we're the third party and i have spent the last five years at least in depth studying i mean really really in depth 30 or 40 books studying how the nazis came to power and how the communists came to power and one of the things that they did in fact the essential element of these tyrannies the socialist tyrannies national socialists international socialists didn't matter millions of people 100 million people killed and every single time that they bring this catastrophe to the world, the first thing they have to do is they have to demonize an opponent. They have to demonize an opponent and they have to make somebody responsible for all of their own failures. And I'm watching it happen here and I'm one of those people that they're demonizing and so are you and I'm not gonna take it, which is why the only peace I have sometimes when I go to bed at night is the thought that, oh, wait a minute, we're the ones with the guns and they're not. They're the ones who are afraid to open a, a, a jackknife. That gives me a little warmth sometimes uh, in the middle of these onslaughts. We'll be back tomorrow. There'll be more of this outrage and we'll be here to cover it. I'm Bill Whittle. This is the Hot Mike Show on NRA TV.